हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ इट हेल्प्स इन योर लर्निंग नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम व्हिच सेज दैट डिटरमाइन द नॉर्मल एंड फ्रिक्शनल ड्राइविंग फोर्सेस दैट द पार्शियल स्पाइरल ट्रेक एग्जर्ट्स ऑन द 200 केजी मोटरसाइकिल एट द इंस्टेंट व्हेन थीटा इज 5/3 रेडियंस एंड थीटा डॉट इज दैट इज द एंगुलर वेलोसिटी इज 0.4 रेडियन पर सेकंड एंड द एंगुलर एक्सेलरेशन इज 0.8 रेडियन पर सेकंड स्क्वायर so we are going to solve this problem by using the cylindrical coordinates so we have to define our cylindrical coordinates let's say that this is my positive radial direction and in the increasing theta direction we will have the uh, theta direction this is my theta direction let's say if i place it here this is my theta direction and uh, at the instant at this particular instant we will have the tangent to the path so let's say that the tangent to the path is represented by this green line so if so now this is the tangent to the path at this particular instant let me draw it accurately right so let's say i place that tangent here so this is the tangent to the path when theta is equal to let's say 5 divided by 3 pi radians so now the so now the normal force is going to act perpendicular to this tangent right so let me draw that normal force this is that normal and that frictional driving force will be acting parallel to the tangent right or it will be acting along the tangent line so this is that uh frictional driving force let's say and the weight of the bike is acting vertically downwards so let me represent that weight and that weight will be acting in this direction like this so this is that weight which is 2 200 times 9.81 now the tangent always makes an angle with the radial direction and that angle is represented by psi and is we know that tan psi is equal to r divided by dr by d theta so dr by d theta and if we take tan inwards then we will be able to find that psi angle which the tangent makes with the radial direction so since we want to find the psi when theta is equal to 5 divided by 3 radians so we have to find r and dr by d theta value at that particular instant so as we know that r is given as a function of theta so i can write that r is equal to 5 theta so if i put theta in this equation so we will be able to find that r at that particular instant and theta is 5 divided by 3 pi similarly if i take the derivative of this with respect to theta dr by d theta so that will give us 5 so so this gives me 26.179 or we can say the 26.18 so the radius is 26.18 meters when theta is equal to 5 divided by 3 pi so now the psi is we can write that the psi is 10 inverse and r is 26.18 divided by 5 tan inverse 26.18 divided by 5 and that angle which the tangent makes with the radial direction is 79.188 79.188 degree this is that psi angle so this is 79.188 degrees this normal is perpendicular to this tangent line and this uh, theta axis is perpendicular to the radial line so if the angle between the tangent and the radius the radial axis is 79.188 uh, so the angle between the normal and the theta direction is also that psi angle which is 79.188 now as we know that this normal force is uh, perpendicular with that tangent axis so this means that this whole angle this whole angle is 90 degrees so let's say that this force f is making some uh, phi angle with the theta axis is, so we can say that phi plus psi 
we can say that phi plus psi equals to 90 degree. So phi is equal to 90 minus psi. So we will find it 90 minus uh, answer. So that will give us 10.812. So this is 10.812 degrees so this force f is going to make uh, that phi angle which is 10.812 with the theta axis and now let's assume that uh, the acceleration in the theta direction is acting in this direction and let's say that acceleration is a theta and let's say that the acceleration in the radial direction is acting in the positive radial direction and let's say this is a r so now we can find this AR in a theta by using this kinematics equation. So we are given that theta is equal to 5 divided by 3 pi radians. Theta dot is 0 0.4 radian per second. And similarly, theta double dot is 0 0.8 radian per second square. And we are given that this radius is this is given as 5 theta. So we know the radius when theta is equal to 5 divided by 3 pi radians, which is 26.18 meters. Similarly, if I take the derivative of r with respect to time, so that will be r dot. And this is 5, and that will be. If we take the derivative of r with respect to time, so we have to apply the chain rule since theta is a function of uh, time as well. So that will be 5 theta dot. And then we can write that r dot and 5 theta dot is 0 0.4. So this is equal to 2 meter per second. And similarly, if I take one another derivative of r dot with respect to time, so that will become 5 theta double dot. And r double dot is 5 and 0 0.8 so this gives us 4 meter per second square now we can use these two equations so a r i can write that a r is r double dot which is 4 minus r so r is 26.18 into theta dot square and theta dot is 0.4 square similarly a theta so a theta is r theta double dot so r is 26.18 theta double dot is 0 0.8 plus 2 and r dot is 2 and theta dot is 0 0.4 so now a r is 4 minus 26.18 into 0 0.4 square so this comes out to be 0 0.189 minus 0 0.189 meter per second square so this means that in the radial direction the motorcycle is deaccelerating right so its acceleration is decreasing along the radial direction similarly uh, we can find a theta which is 26.18 into 0 0.8 plus this 2 into 2 is 4 so 4 into 0 0.4 so this gives us 22.544. So A theta is plus 22.544 meter per second square. Now we are going to apply the equation of motions. Let's say if I want to apply the summation of forces along the radial axis is equals to MAR. So before going to apply the equation of motion, we have to resolve all the forces along the radial end and, uh, and along the radial and the theta direction so we can resolve this normal force into its components it will have two components one of its component is going to act in the negative radial direction like this and one of its components is going to act in the positive theta direction similarly we can resolve this force f into its components it will have two components as well one of its components is going to act in the positive theta direction and one of its components is going to act in the positive radial direction. So since it is making phi angle, so this one is the cos component. This one is the sine component. Similarly, this is the cos component of n. This is n cos of psi. 
and this is n sine of psi this is this one is f cos of phi and this one is this one is f sine of phi and similarly we need to resolve this weight as well so if i complete this triangle here and if i extend the line of action of this weight so we can see that here we have a right angle triangle so as we know that this whole angle is given which is 5 divided by 3 pi so if we convert this 5 divided by 3 pi into uh, degrees so this is equal to 300 degrees since we know that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians or we can say that 1 radian is equal to 360 divided by 2 pi or we can say that 180 divided by 2 pi so 5, 5 divided by 3 pi radian is equal to we, we need to multiply this 180 divided by 2 pi multiply by 5 divided by 3 so this is this is 180 divided by pi remember this is 180 so i will multiply 180 divided by pi with 5 pi divided by 3 so this gives us 300 so this is 300 degrees so if this whole angle is 300 and the whole revolution is 360 then this angle is 60 degrees so if it is 60 and if this is 90 then this angle is 30 degrees so from this we conclude that that weight is making uh, 30 degrees with the positive radial direction so now we can resolve this weight into its components as well so it will have two components one of its component is going to act in the positive radial direction like this and one of its component is going to act in the negative theta direction so this one is the cos component and this one is the sine component now if we apply the summation of forces along the radial direction so we have this weight component which is uh, acting in the positive radial direction so i will write plus and that is weight weight is 200 times 9.81 and it is the cos component similarly the sine component of the normal is acting in the negative radial direction so i will write minus n sine of psi and psi angle is 79.188 similarly this sine component of force f is acting in the positive radial direction so i will write plus and that is f sine of phi and phi is 10.812 and this is equal to the mass times so mass is 200 and ar is minus 0 0.189 so we can simplify this equation i can write that this is minus n uh, sine of let me find sine of 79.188 this is 0 0.982 so let me write that this is minus 0 0.982 n plus i will write this term first so sine of 10.812 this is 0 0.188 so 0 0.188 f equals to this 200 i will subtract this weight component from this right so 200 200 minus 0 0.189 into minus 200 into 9.81 cos of 30 so this is minus 1736.942 minus 1736.942 this is equation 1 now if we apply the summation of forces along the theta direction equals to m a theta so as we can see that um, this component this cos component of the normal force is acting in the positive theta direction so i will write plus n cos of psi so psi is again 79.188 similarly this cos component of force f is acting in the positive theta so i will write plus f cos of phi so f 
pi is again uh, 10.812 and similarly the weight component is acting in the negative theta direction and it is the sine component so I will write minus weight is 200 times 9.81 sine of 30 degrees and this is equal to mass times a theta so mass is 200 and a theta is 22.544 so 22.544 so now again we need to simplify this equation so cos of 79.188 0 0.188 so I will write plus 0 0.188 and plus cos of cos of 10.8812 this gives me 0 0.982 0 0.982 f and equal to I will subtract this weight component from this so this is 200 into 22.544 plus this will be this will become plus on the other side so this is plus 200 9.81 sine of 30 So this gives me 5489.8, 5489.8, this is equation 2. So now we got these two simultaneous equations. So today I will tell you people how to solve these two simultaneous equations using calculator. So we will convert the mode of the calculator to matrices. So I will this uh, enter into 6, that is the matrix option and then 1. And then I will press this on button or reset button. So I am in matrices mode. Then I have to convert my mode to equation. That is the fifth number. That is fifth. And then the first one that is a n x plus b n y. So we have this n and f. So we have two variables. So I will select this one. So now I have to enter these coefficients. This is minus 0 0.982. So minus 0 0.982 is the coefficient of that n in equation 1. Then the coefficient of f is 0 0.188. And then the right hand side is minus 1736.942. So this is our equation 1. Now equation 2 is 0 0.188. So I will enter the coefficient of the n 0 0.188. 0 0.982 and 5489.8 and one thing you people need to remember that you people have to enter the coefficients in particular order right if you people have entered the coefficient of n in the first row then you people have to enter the coefficient of n in the second row as well of that of this matrix right so now if i press equal so this gives me one variable and this gives me one another variable that is 5066 so the first variable was this is a b and c and while we selected the that equation that was a and x plus b and y plus equals to c so in our order the x is n and the y is f so now if i press equal again so x is n, so n is 2738, so n is 2738 uh, 0.67 newtons, so 2738.67 and the f force is 5066.12, so f is 5066.12 newtons. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Kindly subscribe my channel if it helps in your learning. Also like this, this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from Hibbler Dynamics.